Hello and welcome to Adobe Photoshop CS2 and my tutorial on the color replacement tool. Now the color replacement tool comes to us in the form of a brush and can be accessed from the tools palette over here on the left hand side. The color replacement tool was first seen in Photoshop Elements and is now also found in Photoshop CS2 sharing the same button as the brush and pencil tools. You can also use the B key on the keyboard which scrolls through the brush, pencil and color replacement tools. Now just to explain what we're going to be doing here, up on the screen I've got a photograph of my sister's car and just in case you wanted to know it's a Ford Puma and we're simply going to change the color of the car using the color replacement tool. So with the color replacement tool selected Let's take a look at what options we have for adjusting the tool. Now as we said we're using a variant of the brush tool so the first option we get is brush size. If we click the downward facing arrow it will reveal the brush setting dialog box. Now I'm going to set the size of the brush as we're going along so I'll leave that option alone for a second but I'm going to have to make sure I'm using a fairly hard brush with the smallest spacing setting which is 1%. The next option is the blending mode and if you're up to speed with the HSB color mode you'll find these a lot easier to understand. HSB being hue which is the actual color, saturation which is the intensity of the color and brightness which is the luminosity value. So if we use the hue mode will just be affecting the color and not the luminosity or brightness values. If we switch to the saturation mode will affect the intensity of the color but not the color itself or the brightness. And if we use the color mode will affect the hue and saturation but not the brightness. And finally by using the luminosity mode will be affecting the brightness value but not the actual color or saturation generally you'll find that the hue or more commonly used color mode is going to be more useful and in today's exercise I'm going to use the color blending mode. The next three icons we have are the sampling modes and this just lets Photoshop determine which colors we're replacing. This can be set to either continuous, once or background swatch. The difference I'll explain in just a few moments. Next we have the limits of the brush and this determines which pixels inside the brush area we're going to replace. Discontinuous will replace all pixels inside the brush area whilst contiguous will only replace pixels which are connected to the area you're sampling so it won't jump across edges to replace colors which fall inside the tolerance value you've set. The find edges option works like contiguous but tries even harder to maintain edge detail inside an image. We also have an anti-aliasing option which smooths the appearance of replaced pixels and finally we have a tolerance value which I found can be the difference between a good or bad color replacement. I'm going to go ahead and show you how this works so if I go down to my foreground color and click the icon to reveal the color picker and what we're going to do here is select a color to effectively paint the car with and it may be helpful if we do this with the HSB controls so in the hue field we want to enter a value of 60 which is measured in degrees as this particular value is based on the standard color wheel we want to add a saturation of 100% and then a brightness value of 100% and we'll click OK. Now we can zoom in just a touch and get the size of our brush about right. We can do that by using the bracket keys or we can change the brush size like I showed you before. Now we're going to make sure our sampling is set to once and that we're using the find edges setting and I'm going to set the tolerance value to 100% and start brushing away on the paintwork below the window. Now you can see that we're getting some of the rubber seal around the window 
and that's because we're selecting too many pixels meaning we've got our tolerance value set too high. If I go ahead and set a tolerance of 1% you can see that we're now not getting enough pixels so whilst we know from what we're doing here but it can be tricky to get the right tolerance value selected you can see just how important it is in order to select the right pixels for replacement now I'm going to select a tolerance of about 50 percent and give that a go and you can see that that's just about right I will say though at this stage that we're working with a pretty complicated area so you'll need to be able to change the tolerance value during the color replacement process itself now if we take a closer look at the brush you'll see a small X in the middle and that's where the sampling comes in we're going to set it to once up here and that means that the color I want to replace will be sampled once when I first click the brush and it will only of course be the color directly underneath the cross the continuous sampling mode means that as you drag the brush you continuously resample the color that you want to replace the background swatch option allows you to only change colors that are the same as your predefined background color which is set down here by clicking the background icon now don't be afraid to experiment with the tool as it does take a while to get the feel of how it works and I'd recommend you brush in small amounts at a time so that then if you make a mistake you can just hit control Z to undo your last move and not have to lose lots of work now I'm just going to brush away in the door area to replace the original color with my selected color also you'll need to get into the habit of changing your brush size as you work and that makes it far easier to get into those small areas and you can see in this area here we need to use a small brush to paint the color as accurately as possible okay now I'm going to forward the project about 10 minutes and bring up an almost finished version of the image now I just wanted to demonstrate how we can paint back in details that we didn't want to lose in the first place and a great example is this light cluster at the back of the car now say I've accidentally painted it yellow which I have of course but I don't like it so I want to bring back the original colors and a great way of doing that is by using the history brush tool over here in the tools palette the shortcut is Y on the keyboard incidentally now with this tool selected we need to select a history state to paint back in and we do that by bringing over our history palette and making sure in the first history state we have the source for the history brush selected by clicking this icon here now any touching up that we do will replace what's currently on the screen with what's selected as a source point in the history palette so if I start brushing away inside this light cluster we're going to bring back our original pixels so I'm going to zoom out and here's the original photograph and here's our finished photograph with a little bit of work from our color replacement tool and the history brush tool I hope you found this tutorial helpful thanks very much for watching